the most news in the morning. CNN's American Morning, weekday, 6 a.m. Eastern. I have a message, a message from the Tea Party, a message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We've come to take our government back. Dr. Rand Paul joins us live this morning from Bowling Green. Uh, Thanks for getting up with us. Boy, 59% to 34%. This wasn't a squeaker. Uh, We had you on the show a year ago when people were saying it was a long shot for you to even get this far. Uh, What do you think changed over the past year that allowed you to win this primary? Well, I tell people it was the perfect storm. You know, it's the mood of the country and our message being exactly equal to the mood of the country, which is... We've got to get our government back. Our government's out of control. Spending is out of control. And really, the deficits are getting to the point where they endanger our country. I mean, you look at Greece right now and the chaos in Greece with the debt crisis. I don't think people want that to happen in our country. And uh, you mentioned a a lot of uh, things there that Republicans are talking about these days, uh, the national debt being uh, first among them. Uh, But uh, your minority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, uh, your fellow uh, Kentuckian, uh, was not uh, behind you in this race. He was behind your opponent. Um, What do you make of that? Uh, Are there any uh, bad feelings there between you and the minority leader? Uh, How do you expect to rally Republicans, uh, all of them in your state, behind your campaign during this election? I don't think there'll be any bad feelings. I've already had a lot of Republicans coming up to me and saying, you know what, we will work together and we'll support you. For the last month, I've had nothing but Republicans come up to me around Kentucky and saying, after you win, we'll be supporting you. I got three personal letters this week saying, yeah, we'll be supporting you after the primary. And so, no, I think uh, primaries divide people, but general elections will bring the Republicans back together. You know, a lot of what you said uh, sounds good on the campaign trail. The rhetoric uh, was very attractive to many people. Uh, Nobody wants to run up huge deficits. Nobody wants to see the country fall into a debt crisis. Nobody wants to see, you know, runaway spending. But how do you put that into action if you indeed do make it uh, to Washington? I mean, you have a state that relies heavily on getting federal subsidies for uh, for many aspects of life. And in many cases, uh, your congressional delegation found themselves reelected because of the ability to gain seniority and steer more federal money toward Kentucky? Well, I'd say, first of all, that's sort of the old mentality. Let's snatch up as much federal dollars and bring them home. The problem is, is so much of the money is lost in the bureaucracy in Washington. As you churn it and swirl it through the bureaucracy, money is lost and doesn't come home. So I say, if you want money for projects, if you need new policemen, don't send your money to Washington to pay for policemen in Kentucky. Let's just leave the money here in Kentucky if we need policemen. And, and uh, Dr. Paul, uh, let me ask you, because, uh, you know, uh, the, the Democrats uh, who are going to be running against you here in the fall in Kentucky uh, seem to be licking their chops a, a little bit at the prospect of running against you. They say that you would uh, eliminate the Department of Agriculture, you would eliminate the Department of Education, uh, that uh, you have come close to talking about elim- eliminating the Federal Reserve. Are all of those things true? Would you eliminate the Department of Agriculture, the Education Department, and the Federal Reserve? Well, the interesting thing is we're licking our chops about running against President Obama and his platform. In fact, I invite President Obama, if he's watching this morning, come on down to Kentucky. We'd love to have you campaign for the Democrat nominee. President Obama's agenda has gone so far to the left, and it's not popular here in Kentucky. Right, His but in order to cut the deficit, in order to cut... popular with 30 percent of right. the people. But in order to cut the Excuse deficit me? and reduce the national debt... Uh, you're going to have to you're going to have to make some drastic decisions. And uh, your opponents have said that you would well, think, your, your Democratic opponents have said you would eliminate the Department of Agriculture, the Education Department uh, and perhaps the Federal Reserve. Are, is that true? Right. Would you what do I those would things? Say would you, would you support good, those things well, in a vote if they were to come before the Congress? There's a good book by Christopher Edwards called Downsizing Government. And he says what for every one of those Department of Education, Department of Agriculture, you do a multi-step test. Can you eliminate it? Can you downsize it? Can you privatize it? Can you make it smaller? But we have to do that multi-step test for every department of government. Now, that doesn't mean I'm someone who's going to eliminate government or get rid of departments completely, but it means you look at every step, and there will be some departments you might be able to get rid of, but at the very least, they all need to be downsized, 
And But what we really need is we need a rule. We need just a rule that says you have to balance the budget. I think that's a very reasonable proposal and something that the American people and those in Kentucky will embrace. I, I want to ask you uh, back to some of the questions about spending and about people feeling overtaxed. I mean, how do you reconcile uh, a couple of the, uh, the stats that came out recently? Uh, one uh, was a, an interesting article from uh, the USA Today that quotes the Bureau of Economic Analysis reporting, saying that tax bills in 2009 technically are the lowest level that we've seen since 1950. I'm you know, uh, and when you look at record unemployment that we're dealing with right now, people in the state of Kentucky rely on getting checks from the federal government to keep food on their table. So how do you uh, explain to people that while this may sound good and this may be a, a good idea in theory, practically it may be very painful? Right. I think what's interesting is is that if you go to these tea parties and you ask people, uh, are you taxed enough already? That's the acronym. They do. They don't believe in higher taxes. But if you ask them, would you accept the same level of taxation for simply reducing federal spending so we don't keep adding to the deficit? I think they'd all say yes. So it's really about the debt and it's really about federal spending more than it is about reducing taxation. I also say that we as Republicans have given false promises often because we say, oh, we'll cut your taxes, but we'll still bring home the pork. What I would say is that if you care about people and you care about putting food on the table, you can't keep spending us into oblivion. If we destroy our currency paying for this massive debt, then nobody has anything. So I would say that it's more important to get our fiscal house in order than it is to say, oh, I'll just bring home the